<laughs> I'm a fool. I spent years studying the workings of the heart. Yet it seems I still haven't learned a thing. Shop. The process of encoding hearts is incalculable. The inhabitants of my twilight town were data created from real hearts. I was convinced that they would think and behave the way I had envisioned, but I couldn't have been more wrong. A heart is so much more than any system. I saw it when Roxas and Kairi crossed paths. I knew, but I was too stubborn to accept it. It's always the same. I try to wrap my mind around things my heart already knows. Only to fail. I had, I had so, so many, many plans, plans in store. store. But once Sora was an acting force, they fell apart. They fell apart. All my research amounted to nothing compared with that one boy's heart. That one boy's heart. Aviola, I deserve as much for failing to see you for the fool you are. They are not. Foolish apprentice of a foolish man. My disregard brought chaos to more worlds than one. But what were you seeking? You have surpassed nothing. Only proved how little we both know. We may profess to know the heart, but its essence is beyond our reach. We're both ignorant, as oblivious as when we began. Afraid that any world you try to create, any world of yours, would be an empire of ignorance. I had so many plans in store, but once Sora was an acting force, they fell apart. They fell apart. All my research amounted to nothing compared with that one boy's heart. That one boy's heart. Perhaps. I wanted to atone for events of the past, even if no apology can undo the harm I have wrought. I felt that I ought to leave at least something behind. A clue, I hope, to finding yourselves or your lost friends in your hour of need. The heart has always been quick to grow. Each exposure to light to the natural world, to other people, shapes this most malleable part inside of us. Sora was the only one able to return to his human form without destroying his nobody. That is a statement to the love in his heart for other people and the bonds that tie them together. Perhaps he has the power to bring back the hearts and existences of those connected to him. To recreate people we thought were lost to us forever. He has touched countless hearts, and he has saved them. And some of those hearts have never left him. Whether they fell into darkness or were trapped there. Whether they sleep in the darkness of Sora's heart, or were welcomed into its war. They can be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And of course, we would not be here if not for the amazing sages of the lodge, these beautiful names you see right here on your screen, those willing to throw as little as a dollar a month to keep my nonsense going. But again, as I always like to say, that's just a bonus. All I ask is that you're here to hang out. We're talking Nintendo today, all things Nintendo. God knows there's plenty to talk about, and we're not doing it alone. We're doing it with you, the chat, and with a legendary guest, none other than the amazing treehouse dude what is going on thanks for stepping back in the lodge how you doing while well, i'm so flattered no thanks man i <laughs> i appreciate it everything's good thanks for having me um 
Yeah, I'm I'm super excited to talk about this because I feel like even with Nintendo, so much has been happening or in development just the past year or two, you know, and uh, it kind of worked out perfectly with the uh, Tears of the Kingdom trailer releasing. Oh, yeah. And uh, the Mario movie coming up. It's it's the it's the time to talk about it. <laughs> I, you know, I couldn't have said it better myself. It's the time to talk about it. Tears of the Kingdom is around the corner. This Mario movie is down the block. There's just yeah. so much happening. And, you know, we got a lot of people in here already. We got Kevin Hughes, the champ, Addison Sanders, Yo. Drew Stilett, Cheesecake, Kevin Ribeiro, Will's Word, bunch of legends in here. Always got to shout out the early birds. Um, you know, we're definitely going to want to hear your guys' thoughts on everything. Um, you know, where do we start? Where do we start, Tree? I feel like we got to start with either Zelda or Mario. Before we get into some of the other stuff, I know we wanted to talk some Smash Brothers. Uh, right, right. Some of Nintendo's older IPs. Where would you like to to kick things off? Well, it's kind of. I think let's let's start with Zelda because okay. we're right here, you know. Because that I think just I mean that I'm buying that Pro Controller, hands yeah, down. That's what I got might. You. That's what got. Yeah, you. that's what got me. I mean, if I could, I would definitely buy the Switch because I love the gold and the little bit of green and then no. the black the black texture on the back. Like those are those the are the limited Switch consoles that I love the most. It's like with the Pikachu and Eevee uh, kind of pattern on the back for the Let's Go series, and then even with the Dragon Quest, they had some like the slime Joy Cons and the patterns on the back, and then the Tears of the Kingdom one. It just looks it looks so good. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of I'm I'm not gonna lie. I was a little worried when we got all the trailers, but there was no solid gameplay. Yeah. But watching watching this trailer kind of made me feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. I think I got I didn't personally get caught up in it, but I saw some people going, "Oh, it's just gonna be Breath of the Wild DLC," um, which you know, no, as good as the Champions Ballad DLC was. You know, everybody wants us to be a fresh, you know, brand new game, you know, feel right. new. And, you know, as much as the exploration aspect of everything is what I put the most stock in, you know, not for traditional Zeldas, but at least with Breath of the Wild, mm -hmm. what I enjoyed the most was the just the vast exploration. But I have yeah. to say, a lot of these new gameplay mechanics are some of the most creative ideas I think I've seen come out of Nintendo. How do you feel? You're right. Yeah, I, I I feel the same. I think especially with when you have a game like Breath of the Wild, it's nearly impossible to make a sequel and have it possibly be better or make expectations higher, mm -hmm. which it obviously automatically does because Breath of the Wild is just like one of the best games of all time. Um, yeah, I think them adding on it from what I saw with the gameplay, I was like, I was like, I love how much they're kind of hiding from us because even with these creative mechanics they were showing, they were like, oh, I wish we could show you more. There's so much to go on. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that's a special thing about Nintendo is that sometimes I think they should work for the government because they're so secretive. <laughs> you know, you see, you see, you see, you see leaks like pop out of, of Microsoft and like S S Square Enix and all this mm -hmm. stuff. But you never see that shit with Nintendo, no. right? I mean, they're they are they are locked on solid, and I'm glad they've been taking their time with this game because I've honestly been a little bit worried about that franchise for their 35th anniversary. It wasn't really a whole lot, you not know. We got all, like dude, not, not at all. all, not as much as it should have been deserved for them too, mm -hmm. which is a really. I mean, it was it was kind of concerning because you see like. The Fire Emblem games were thriving. Pokemon yeah. was going is going great. Like all these other types of like Mario still getting DLC, Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I was always worried for the Zelda series in general. Um, but after seeing these creative mechanics, I'm I'm happy they are kind of just taking this step and like obviously just adding more and some people are saying oh my gosh it looks it looks like it's just added dlc well i remember they were going to add more dlc to the original game and then they were like well we just decided to make a sequel um and then i'm sure of course they added on from that and that and that but i th i think the game is is gonna be great just a heads up if you guys are on twitter or anywhere a lot online be careful the guidebook 
has leaked. Mm -hmm. So um, there are some pretty heavy spoilers. So just just a big watch out. But yeah, I I feel better after watching it. I was like, oh, that's genius, like merging items together. And then I was like, what mechanic stood out to you the most? I know everyone loves the stick, (laughs) but I like the the super long, the super long one. Um, Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of the stick and the rock. I just think it looks so funny. I think it's just so I think it's so entertaining how, you know, like he moves it as if the rock wasn't already on it. And it just it's it's that much more powerful because like it, I just remember so many instances where I was like, oh, shit, all I have are sticks like I'm screwed. I'm going to get destroyed. But now it's like the most basic things can be the best advantage for you. And I like that because it adds it adds on that survival instinct of being in the wild, because like there were times in Breath of the Wild where it's like. It's like, man, if I was actually in this guy's position, like I'd I'd put all this stuff together. Like I'd throw rocks, I'd do this, you know. But um yeah, I obviously I, I think that's just really funny. But um I do think it was interesting how in the first trailer or one of the first trailers they showed like you flying in the air and people were like, What is this item? Like, is this a special thing? But no, it's like it's like there there are gonna be so many things you can discover like years down yep. from the game's release that people can create yeah, and I, i'm I, yeah go ahead Keep i'm excited no you're good you're good it's like it's like i don't think we have a game with this much substance for exploring and creativity you know it's like nintendo just added more to the open world that it's like i hate to compare minecraft to it but Minecraft just does such a good job of you like mixing things together and exploring. But I think this takes it to like a whole new level that Nintendo's never done before. Well, it really, it's starting to make me feel like the possibilities are endless because there's so many different, there's so many different items you could pick up. Like, you know, there's a clip on screen right now. It shows if you use the keys eyeball, you basically have these home attack arrows, you know, but I'll say the thing that stood out to me was the, the, this vehicle crafting. You know, the way you yes. could build the boat or you could build a hot air balloon or you right. could build like this ship you could fly through the air with. That yeah. to me, I'm like, man, I can't wait to see like Pimp My Ride, Tears of the Kingdom. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, right. Check out my whip. Check out my, like everybody just showing off their crest. That's the thing I think I'm excited to see is like the community showing off what they're able to build, what everybody's right. able to craft and bring to the table. Um mm-hmm. You know, and I spoke about this a little bit on a previous podcast. I think maybe the one I did with trousers, but you know, in the previous game, you know, you had your own house, you got to build your own town. I yeah. would like to see a lot of these custom features that have just been added to the gameplay. I'd like to see a lot of that get added to those features too. Like if I build a cool ship that I'm flying through the air, I, I want a place to park it. You know, right. like, that'd be cool too. If I park it somewhere in the world, right? Like maybe I build an airship and then I park it in Zora's domain. If I go out and play for another five hours and come back to Zora's domain, I want that ship to still be there. Like exactly. that's the kind of stuff I'm interested in seeing. You know, it's not a deal breaker right. for me, but it would be uh-huh. really cool if you, if there's a way you could um, store or keep some of these crafts that you make. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And I hate to like base observations with feelings, but I have this this kind of it, it just it feels like it's just going to be a good Zelda game. And what I mean by that is, you know, we had Ocarina of Time and then Majora's Mask. Majora's mm-hmm. Mask was just obviously dark. Um and then we had Twilight Princess which you know, is dark as well. And then we got Skyward Wing and then we had Breath of the Wild, which I I wouldn't say is dark at all, but you know, it's not, I, 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 considering how dark Zelda games can get, Breath of the Wild was not a very dark game. It's not, but this one I'm having, I'm having some, oh yeah, some good hopes for it. You it's know, it's gonna get dark, it, bro. It's gonna, it's gonna get, get dark. dark. Yeah, um, I think so too. And I, I'm glad they haven't really shown off anything about the story. I, I I've got a feeling we've got one more trailer coming our way that'll give us mm-hmm. a little bit more insight to the story. But right. As you were kind of getting at in the beginning, this is something I really hope that they play close to the chest. You know? Yeah. Like, I already know I'm buying this game. Don't show me too much. Um, yeah. they. I mean, they know that, too. I mean, think about all the trailers we've got since it's been announced. Like, it's been a long time. 
and I think they're holding, they always hold their cards close to them, which is funny because they were originally like, you know, a card company way back in the day. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. I don't like this whole, you know, it just looks like DLC. It's like you haven't even played the game. No, you know, I'm type sorry. Thing. DLC does not completely overhaul gameplay. If you wanted to say, exactly, you know, oh, it looks like DLC because the gameplay is the same, but. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, they talked about in the beginning, you know, he mentioned, hey, Hyrule is going to look a lot different than you remember, but we're not going to mm -hmm. show you that today, which I love. Yeah. Because to me, right. man, as much fun, even though I think while Breath of the Wild's combat, in my opinion, has a ways to go to catch up to, I guess, what I would call modern standard. To uh -huh. me, the thing that really appealed to me the most in Breath of the Wild was that exploration. I felt like I really, I needed to, Man, I needed to discover and search under every rock, dive yeah. under every lake, like go into every mm -hmm. crevice, every cave. Like it really incentivized you to want to explore. And I, I'm hoping they can capture that again based on the right. little bit that we were able to see. I think they will, because obviously we have all these sky, uh, all these sky, le what did they call them? They had an official term for it. Sky, sky lofts or no well, sky loft was the uh, town from skyward sword that high, like all the characters are from right hey, let's just call them skylands you know they're gonna have all these different mm. skylands that we can explore um, yeah again it just there's there's so much to it you could tell they put a lot of love into it link with mm. long hair is a little jarring but i like it it kind of kind of gives off the wild man like a dude living in the wild you know kind of yeah yeah um, it is and, and i do i just it sounds so silly but like i love my some of my favorite characters i just love them in a in a nice dark forest green like like sora and the blitz form with that mm -hmm. green is like super cool to me link with this type of like like yeah he always had green but this is i think his just the hardest thing for companies to do is to get their main character and do a little bit of a redesign because it's very mm -hmm. risky but it's something you have to do um the well, I'm developers happy to see him in the green again because you know as much yeah. as i liked the hyrule champion blue which they've shown that's a tunic you can wear in this game but to me man right. link is green dude you know what i'm saying yeah like to me exactly when i think link the color green boop pops right in my head um you know right it's funny it's funny because you think that they would have saved the blue for this game because you're in the sky and they would have done the green before but I guess this, this works out too. <laughs> works for um, me. Well, let me yeah. ask you. So we're both we're both pretty much fans of what we saw from the gameplay. By the way, it's on screen now too. This dive and glide mechanic is amazing. I love the idea that I could just I can get knocked off one of these worlds or one of these skylands and just look at the whole landscape and just be like, I want to go there. What's yeah? That? I want to go there. Like that was something that was cool in breath of the wild also was that when mm -hmm. you got to the top of one of those towers or if you were at a tall landscape you could see out in the world and everything you could see you could go to you know yeah. there wasn't really anything that was beyond your reach so mm -hmm. you know to me the gameplay is incredibly encouraging it looks like a relative overhaul i love that it's going to really ignite the creativity of the player you know what I mean? Yeah, that's another thing too. Your own. Let me ask you, what is something we haven't seen yet that you're hoping this game delivers on? Let me hear Link's voice. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm kind of no, I'm kind of kidding. I mean, the thing is, it's I've I've been thinking about it for a while. I'm like, come on, just do it. Like just one sentence, just like one word, like one, like no haya, just like one, one solid, like talk to me you know i think it um, the immersion i think it's too late i think you it's think too it's too late. late yeah they've introduced voice acting to the series and link didn't say a word to me that's checkmate yeah. i don't know mm -hmm. i i think the silent protagonist is not something they should ever give up right well i do i do think that like i would love to even if it's for a second i would i would love to play a zelda even if it's for like a quick a quick battle type thing because those type of experiences is just like playing with a character that you've known for in a franchise for such a long time like playing as playing as riku like in chain of memories i don't know it's it's different playing them as in like kingdom hearts 3 real quick like that was something i thought was really like cool just because it's like 
you've been doing so much for this character, like for so many years. And it's like, I just want to yeah. be on the other end. I want to be on the other end for a little bit. And, um, you know, like I want, I want Zelda to save Link, you know, <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I'm really interested. Cause I think, I think the gameplay looks amazing. The story is going to be fantastic. I'm sure they seem pretty confident in it too and i'm glad they took their time with this game because i know i know it's a long it's been a long time but um it's they whatever whatever works for them as long as it runs good on the switch you know and i i'm sure they had i'm sure they ran into that yeah i'm sure it will um you know i'm definitely down for a playable zelda Personally, I think that's a great idea. And if, you know, I've brought this up before too. I think it's very encouraging that she has short hair Mm because again, it's much easier to animate a playable character with short hair than like really long hair, which Zelda's customarily had. Um, Very true. Although they seem to do a good job with Link's long hair. I'll give them credit on that. Um, Mm -hmm. But what I need, man, I need, there are two things I need from this game. If it's really going to be better than Breath of the Wild, here's what I need. One, I need legacy dungeon design back. I love the yeah, I love the pocket right. dungeons. I think pocket dungeons are awesome. But to me, mm-hmm. the Divine Beast dungeons were the worst part of Breath of the Wild. Not saying really? it was bad. Not saying it was unenjoyable. But going mm-hmm. through the Divine Beasts, to me, that broke up the gameplay the most. It was the weakest puzzles. Like I feel like I, in the divine beast, I could just rig these puzzles. If I thought of weird things that I could squeeze anyway, I'm getting out of the yeah. point here. What I would like to see is legacy dungeon design return. And what else mm-hmm. I want to see, I want to see more settlements. You know, I don't want it to just be Kakariko, Hateno, yeah. Zora's domain, Gordon. No, I want to see little pocket towns, you know, like right. breath of the wild ends with Link and Zelda saying, hey, we got to rebuild Hyrule and it must start with us. Like it has to start Mm -hmm. with us. I want to see what they've been doing. You know, I want to see more towns. I I, I know Ganon took over and that's going to create problems. But one of the things that I really can't stand with open world games, even though some of my favorite games ever are technically open world, is that it's always Mm -hmm. post-apocalyptic wasteland. Every town's like half built. It's a lot of empty space. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I want to see more towns, more settlements, not just your flagship towns of Hateno, Kakariko, Goron City, and then a bunch of stables scattered everywhere. Right. You know, I want to see Hyrule building up. I want to see a Hyrule that's restoring itself, even with Ganon taking over. And even with these yeah. little Skylands, too. I want to see settlements on the Skylands. I, I was going to say, I think, I was going to say, I, I'm sure you'll find it in the sky, too, which is just even cooler, you know? I just, I think it, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it was just, it was, it was just having me thinking of like, dude, I would love, I would love just to see like parts of the sky emerge together, you know, like I would love to see them connect and I would love like, you know, what if there's some point in the game where it's like all the pieces come together in the sky and it's not broken anymore, or it's like you go to the past and you see some type of like what the sky used to look like, you know, kind of like what the earth was before it looks now, you know, like, or, you know, or maybe separated and stuff. Maybe you're rebuilding Skyloft. Yeah. You know, right. Maybe all these sky pieces come together and sort mm-hmm. of merge to create one big mass. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And you know, I, I totally feel you on the dungeon stuff because a lot of people don't know, like that's what, like p- puzzles and problem solving. I mean, that's what Zelda games are, you know, at or their core. like at their core. And that's what made that's what has always made them a Zelda game. And I think it is interesting to add. Like, if you think about it, they've been adding open world and now they're adding creativity in the open world to something they already had with like puzzles and problem solving and explorability. I mean, what else can you add? <laughs> I, I, you know, know i i get it because and when i think about they're killing the wild it. dude it's like they made the whole map one big dungeon that almost seems mm-hmm. to be the direction is they took one they took the whole map and just made it this big dungeon you could traverse but what i would right. like to see a little bit of what you're getting at here is take the things that were the best about breath of the wild and combine it with what made the series work for decades you know mm-hmm. and you can really harness that because again i like the shrines those little pocket dungeons were great but i need 
I need my water temples. I need my shadow yeah. temples. I need yeah, the stuff that's, that's the thing. spin me in circles, man. Yeah, that's true. I was going to say you need the stuff that kind of pisses you off. And yeah. once you get through it, it's, you know, you're you're good. But I need I need more than just a, a tr- one tricky puzzle. I need something bigger, you know, like, I don't know. But I, I, I don't think they're going to mess up. Um, it's just it's so crazy to me. This game has been out, what, for six years? Is it six, six years? Six years. Or four? Is it six years? It's Man. six years. Yeah. That's crazy to me. And again. I feel like part of growing up is when you hear a game is delayed or taking a long time, you almost feel encouraged. You're like, oh, yeah. you really care about it. You're delayed. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, same with like, like, dude, I remember like way back in like 2017 when they announced Metroid Prime for the Switch. I- I'm I'm still cool. Like, take your time. It's already been this long. Mm-hmm. You know, Metroid Prime 4. Just, just take your just, time. You're good. You're good. You don't need to rush it, right? right yeah i even rush it um (laughs) i guess you know i want to eventually move on to some more nintendo stuff so maybe to start wrapping up tears of the kingdom um i guess the last thing i'd say is what else do you want to see from the gameplay and what are you hoping to get out of the story the story i'm hoping it it's tricky right because the zelda like the zelda series does have a timeline right and the good part about going into this game is having no idea if this is like an end of a timeline or if it's like in a point in the timeline or how it really affects it if i could jump in go please yeah and they're yet to explain this by the way they Mm -hmm. say breath of the wild so you know how uh the timeline splits into three right they're saying breath of the wild sits at the end of all three timelines really which tells me and maybe they haven't planned it yet but maybe there's going to be another game in the series that's like a timeline merger and sometimes i think it might be this game we haven't really seen anything to suggest that yet but yeah i i feel like nintendo has a desire to take these three timelines and converge it just to make everything easier right right exactly and it's like like it sounds it sounds so silly but it's like dude, the master sword is just so iconic to me it's like it's cool that you you learn a lot about it in um skyward sword but it's like i want to know just more about it in this game like the the lore to me like i'm excited for the creativity i'm excited for the gameplay but like i want to know the lore i want to know about ganon i want to know what's been going on i want to know where this takes place in the timeline and um i think that's just the the biggest thing to me is like how like after breath of the wild finished like people were pondering where it could go from there and now i think it's just even going to be trickier to bring the series from after this game and i'm just so curious i've had to i've like like maybe if i just take one quick peek at a leak Mm. i'll be good but i was like i can't do that keep it it fresh yeah i know fresh i know yeah keep it fresh keep it and for and respect for them i'll do it too but it's like uh yeah i don't i don't know what about you though what do you think i want them to make ganondorf great again that's what i want (laughs) that's what i want right it's been so long Mm -hmm. since we've seen him in a game he is the flagship villain of the Legend of Zelda series. And you know, I don't want to say they don't always do him justice. Because I've, I've, I've appreciated every time he's appeared. But to me, yeah. the best Ganondorf is Wind Waker Ganondorf. Because he really had a motive that was beyond just power. And again, there's nothing wrong with having a villain that's obsessed with power, on a quest for power. But Wind Waker Ganondorf was a little bit more. This mm-hmm. looks like a Ganondorf that despite him being evil, like, dude, they find him and like he's being extracted from like he's a corpse yeah. underground and he's be like, right. not that he's a victim, but it's like, damn, this dude's going to want revenge. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah, for sure. And Definitely. the other thing that I would there's, want. There's something to it. And I was just going to say the other thing I would want is one, I don't want a story told through memory. I, I actually really like. Breath of the Wild story, but I, I'm, mm-hmm. I didn't like just like r- that the whole plot basically was just regaining memory, which is it's yeah. fine, but like, I, I don't know. I think that takes- It's kind of annoying. Yeah, because you get things in different <laughs> orders and you don't, you have to piece it together and then, 
which is yeah. fine. It's fine, you know, but I don't know. I'd like to see this story more told in real time as the adventure yeah. is going on. And again, Breath of the Wild had that, but so much of Zelda was locked away in memory. I don't want that. Right. You know, I want right. I want Zelda here with us rather, or I want her story told through real time as opposed yeah. through memory. So That's a great point. That's a that's an amazing point, actually. Yeah, because again, it, it was it was again, I really when you have it all fleshed out, I really like Breath of the Wild's story because it's Zelda's story. I really believe yeah. that. I got something in my throat. Mm. Hold on, take over. Something no, you're good, bro. You're good. I think uh I don't know. One of the coolest things to me, like in the Zelda series was when we had when Ganondorf took over Zelda and Twilight Princess and we had to fight Zelda and it was called like Zelda's puppet. Um, I just I want to see something that intense to this degree in this game. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it. I would love to see Ganon with the master sword. I know I sound like I'm on crack, <laughs> but um, I just I want something that's just going to blow my mind. And I think it's going to do it in this game. Well, you may not be crazy, you know? dude, because, you know, there, there are some implications that Link lost the Triforce. And mm -hmm. that might be why the sword isn't responding or it's crippled. And, right. you know, for all you know, because, again, the Triforce is usually on Link's hand. And that's the yep. hand that's been taken. That's the hand exactly. that's been replaced. So it'll right. be interesting. It'll be, it'll be very right. interesting to see. Um you know, I trust them to make an excellent game. I'm not worried. I think it's going to be awesome. But yeah, right. uh, I guess maybe and a, now. I will say oh, quick, wait, wait. quick note real quick. If the game was $80, I'd still pay for it. Um, I'm cool with I'm cool with paying 70. Um, Masahiro Soccer, I did a, a, qu a really good video on YouTube basically saying how games have been uh, under underpriced like Ocarina of Time when that first released way back in the day, that was 60 bucks. That's mm -hmm. like, that's like, that's like $110 now, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, especially right now. So I just want to make that point. Like, I don't mind it at all. Cause I, I support Nintendo making an amazing game like this. And I think, I think it'll be great. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I think mm -hmm. the price going up to 70 bucks is not really a big deal because like dude i put like three four hundred hours into breath of the wild doing mm. one full-blown campaign usually takes me like a hundred hours like if i'm gonna put hundreds of hours into the game i don't mind spending 70 bucks i'm probably gonna spend 70 bucks in total to go see the freaking mario movie and that's two mm -hmm. hours of entertainment Okay. If yeah. I'm, if I'm giving you seventy, and that's between snacks and all that shit, so you know what I mean. It's not just the movie, but you get my point. Yeah. But like, you right. know, if I'm spent giving you seventy bucks, and you're gonna entertain me for hundreds of hours, I'm not uh -huh. gonna be that upset. You know. It's what I mean? so funny because yeah, yeah, it's so funny because my friend Enrique was telling me such a great point. He's like, he's like, dude, if you think about it, you really underpaid for smash. And I was like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. He's like, well, think about all the hours you get out of it. Like how many different things you can do with different characters. And you're still like learning from it. It's not just like a one and done thing, you know? So I was just like, yeah, man, if you put it like that for different games, you know, I don't mean to go into that full topic, but I will say, um, I definitely support them doing that. Yeah, as long as it's quality, as long as it's as long as it's good, yeah. as long as it runs sixty frames per second. <laughs> we'll fix the forest. <laughs> fix the forest. If if it's not, I'm gonna be pissed. And I'll be I'll be awaiting your Twitter rant. Um, good, good. <laughs> but I guess uh, now might be a good time to move on to the Mario movie. Um, right. What are, your, what are your thoughts on the Mario movie? I have gone back and forth so much on this film. But I want to let you kind of get on your soapbox first. How do you feel about yeah. it? Yeah. No, you're good. I think well, you have to think about it from a, a business perspective too. It's, you know, Nintendo has ob obviously established a good name in the video game industry. But now what they're doing is that they're getting Mario associated with like the character brand and kind of pushing that out to millions of people and saying yeah. this film, all these characters, 
this is what Nintendo stands for. It's with Mario and his brother Luigi and everyone here, like going on an adventure, and that's what you're doing in the games. And kind of getting that message out there in a movie format, especially with Illuminations, I think is genius for them. Because even though Nintendo Pictures is a thing, um, or is like in development of that, you know, Nintendo has made video shorts and high quality things in the past. Like, I don't know if you've seen those Pikmin shorts. Um, I saw, they I were used made... to watch a lot of the Kid Icarus shorts. Yeah, yeah. The the Pikmin shorts are, um, they re- I think the last one they released was like two years ago, but the storyboard was done by Miyamoto himself. Ooh. And even though, even though the Pikmin don't talk, you can kind of see how well they implement um, the characters' expressions and what they're thinking and what they're feeling just by not saying anything. And, you know, that was all because, like, Miyamoto wanted to make that story pop out. And he's right. kind of, and he's he's been that way with uh, the Mario movie as well. And not only that, Miyamoto was in charge of really taking, you know, full front of the Mario world at Universal. So everything that's coming out right now, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not too concerned about a new Mario game. They still have Mario Kart going, um, you know, Mario World at Universal. They're making this Mario movie. And all of these things have been directly involved with Miyamoto himself, which to me is awesome, but also terrifying because mm. I it's it's kind Explain of like, that. yeah, you know, I, I hate to like compare it like this, but, you know, like back when Steve Jobs was around, you know, he had a different mindset for the company of Apple and it's changed drastically than what it is today. And I feel like there are some people in these industries that are just irreplaceable. And Miyamoto's one of them, Nomura's one of them, Sakurai's one of them. And I thank God that we have these type of developers around, but it also scares me for the future of these industries. But I think what he's really doing is setting Nintendo up for a different type of media presence in the future. Cause you know, all the character trailers that smash did, they weren't done by Nintendo. They were all done through different third party um, media companies. And I think what they're trying to do is that they're trying to resource themselves for whatever kind of trailers or whatever kind of movie scenes or stuff like that they could potentially put in their games or put on netflix or any type of media so them getting into that market is is genius it's kind of like you know like apple they went on you know they started their own tv series which is you know you could you could say it's it's a bit similar like they've made movies like nintendo's trying to go there but the the big deal about this movie is that it's getting Mario and the brand of Nintendo out there, right? And they were very smart to work with Illuminations because if they were like, oh, we just got Nintendo pictures, let's do it ourselves, they would be screwed, right? Mm-hmm. That would just be way too much for them to start out with. So I think I think that's their goal. Um, and I think it's this movie is going to lead into like, I already saw Charlie day wants to make a Luigi's mansion movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I saw an interview with Chris Pratt and he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, yeah. He was like, my son plays Mario and smash. (laughs) I was like, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. But, um, it's just getting these games and bringing it to millions of people who haven't experienced it yet. Like, do you know how many people who love the minions, are gonna go see this movie and tons. just it's also yeah, it's tons. gonna introduce a lot of little kids to it too right because it's not like that's a, the it's thing. not like a child can play mario odyssey and really get through it at the end I know. of the day it's I... gonna be a struggle for them and, you right know, say you know same the same goes for smash like kids can play smash but there's only so much right and again you mm-hmm. know mario's very compatible with kids mario kart and stuff like that right but you know so much of that is party games how often mm-hmm. does a kid get to actually get immersed in the world of Mario and see it for what it is and get to that final showdown with Bowser, you know? And not pay $60. And not pay $60. <laughs> but, you know, first of all, <laughs> I- I'm going to say this. Movie makes a billion dollars easy. Oh, it's going to go crazy. It's going to make a billion dollars 
easy. I'll tell you that right mm-hmm. now. It might, it, I might, it might even get up to a billion and a half. But this movie is going to absolutely smash the box office. I think it's going to be the biggest movie of the year. And you know, there, I feel very yin and yang about this. Half of this excites me. Half of this terrifies me. I think it's going to mm-hmm. launch a whole Nintendo cinematic universe. I'm not saying that to get people's hopes up. What I'm telling you is money talks. It does. Money right. talks. And when Nintendo mm-hmm. gets a revenue of a billion dollars, which of course they got to split it with Illumination and split mm-hmm. it with the movie theaters, they get their cut. But at the end mm-hmm. of the day, when, you, when you're when you bringing in that kind of money, they're going to keep green lighting stuff. I'm not worried about this game being true to the source material, rather the movie. Because mm-hmm. based on what we've seen, you know, just from the visuals alone, you could tell that a lot of love and heart went into this film. Not to mention, the most encouraging thing to me was that Shigeru Miyamoto saw the initial viewing and said, back to the lab. And I'm yeah. coming. He saw the initial mm-hmm. viewing. He didn't like it. And he said, we're redoing a lot of this. So yeah. to me, that means this doesn't just have the Shigeru Miyamoto stamp of approval. This is, mm-hmm. has Miyamoto all over it. Where he's like, all right. right I'm going to take this into my hands and tell you what I want done. That's a mm-hmm. very, very encouraging thing. Now, yeah. here's, I guess, my hot take. Now, when I first heard Chris Pratt's Mario, I wasn't crazy about it. It seemed mm-hmm. a little off-putting. But in the latest trailers, I'm starting to get it. And it, it yeah. really doesn't bug me. However, I'm very surprised that Chris Pratt's Mario got so much heat and no one's talking about Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong. <laughs> and like, I like Seth Rogen. I like all those movies from back in the day. Pineapple Express, Knocked Up, Super Bad, all those Judd Apatow films, absolute classics. But the fact that Chris Pratt's Mario got so much flack, but like everyone's I just going to give Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong a pass. And do it wrong, I, I look forward to hearing Donkey Kong laugh like Seth Rogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's going to be fun. But it's like, <laughs> that's going to be a tougher sell for me. Seth Rogen is DK is going to be such a tougher sell. That's than so Chris true. Chris Pratt's Mario. I don't know. How do you feel about the voice acting and what we've heard? I think, uh, I think, well, when I first heard, um, Charlie Day was going to voice Luigi, I was like, that's genius. That's mm-hmm. absolutely perfect. Like no one else like that is, that's so him. Um, and Arnie then Taylor Joy is Peach. She yeah. nails it. Yeah, she does a great job. Everyone is, I think everyone does a great job. I will say the thing about Chris Pratt is obviously, I I personally think he's going to get the most flack just because he's going to be like the main character. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, if you, if you think about hearing like the Mar- like Mario's original voice actor and like all of that respectfully, I'd get kind of annoyed for like listening to that for an hour, an hour and a half. You know, I, I'm glad they they gave the role to Chris Pratt because it's like I want to hear like, you know, they're going to I'm sure there are going to be moments in that movie where it's very serious. And like, like I, there, there are going to be times where Mario like isn't very happy or he sounds really sad. And I kind of I, I feel like you're going to hear that in a better way with Chris Pratt than you are with like, oh, no, you know, like there's more that's, range. I there's more range. Yeah. yeah, there's there's more range and there's more there's just way more options to express how Mario feels, you know, other than just like his face animation. So, um I think everyone sounds great. I cannot wait to hear Jack Black. Um Yeah. As Bowser, him him and Charlie Day for me are like the peak of what I'm looking forward to. Um I, I think I think it was a good choice. Could he have done a little? Could Chris have done a little better? Yeah, you can you can tell he just he feels a little like not uncomfy, but I don't know if he's ever done anything like this before. No, but you know um, he brought up his interview earlier, and I got to say I really liked the way he handled that interview. You know? Oh, he, I did too. I did too. The yeah. Brought up like, hey, a lot of people are you know concerned about your Mario voice, and I love that he sort of just took it on. He's like, well, you know what? They should go see the movie. In fact, see it twice, which I'm sure, mm-hmm. I'm sure the marketing department and Nintendo love that. But yeah, you know, I right, like that he right. had confidence in it. He's like, well, I'm going to win you over. You're going to go see this mm-hmm. movie and I'm going to go win you over. And I like that, you know. I liked, I loved that. Yeah. A lot of actors take shots 
at fans, I found that when fans have concerns, a lot of actors will take shots. I like mm-hmm. that Chris Pratt was like, no, I know this is important to the fans. I'm one right. of them. I know mm-hmm. this is important to them. They're not wrong for wanting this to be how they have envisioned it for years. I don't know. He, I, exactly. The way he handled that interview is another thing that instilled a lot of confidence in me about this movie. Right, right. And, you know, this... <sighs> When you have people like that on Twitter or on the internet, aka like around the world, kind of telling you that your voice isn't good enough for it, it I'm sure gives you some like I'm sure he had self doubt from that too. But after seeing the movie for himself with other professionals, I'm sure he was kind of relieved that he put his faith in Nintendo and Illuminations Mm -hmm. and they made it work and they knew what they were doing. So, um, I don't know Chris Pratt as an actor but uh the way he handled that interview just was like it was like dude screw everyone else man like i'm with him you know like he just he handled it in such a like mature way and um i was like this this guy's very down to earth like he knows and i'm sure everyone at the department knows like how crazy people can be on the internet but um i i think at the end of the day it was the right choice because i i can't really see anyone else anyone else really doing it now that i've heard his voice in more than just a few clips Mm -hmm. like you said i'm actually excited for the range he can bring to the character you know right i'm actually excited to see that and again i'm I'm surprised that not more flack has been thrown at like uh keegan michael key's toad which i gotta say i actually don't like the way his toad sounds yeah, it's I. Right. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's not gonna ruin the film for me, but it's right. like I don't know all the toad. I don't know. I don't know. That's just yeah. Me. I I feel you. No, I feel you. Yeah, there are other. I think there are other voices in the movie that could be critiqued more, but people just. I also think a lot of people just don't like Chris Pratt in general. But yeah, I mean, um, I hate all of Hollywood. I, I'm sure yeah. that if I met ninety percent of that voice acting cast, I probably wouldn't like them, and they probably wouldn't right. like me. I'll give them that too. Well, right. what's what's the actress's name who's voicing Peach again? I think it's Anya what's... Taylor Joy. Because I saw her do an interview and she was like, "Yeah, recently I've been playing the games and like I just pick Peach and it's so cool." And I'm like, "What game do you pick, Peach? Other than like Mario Kart?" Well, the Super Mario Brothers <laughs> three, I believe, is it three? Yeah, three. You could play as Peach, and then there's uh, the is it on? Games. Is it? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, but I was just thinking, I was like, "What game? Like what? Like I don't. I don't know. It, it, it kind of." Sounded like bullshit to me, but I'm not. <laughs> You're all bullshitting. It's like when Brie yeah. Larson got asked what, what her favorite game is, and she said Nintendo. Like, <laughs> like this is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Look, 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 look. You don't have to like these actors. You don't have to like them. But just like, just like I don't have to like my plumber, he just needs to do a good job. You know? Right. He just yeah. Needs to fix my plumbing. Just like with these actors, you don't have to like them, but you can appreciate if they do a good job. And that's all. I'm exactly from them right you know right exactly so um but yeah it is it is pretty interesting but yeah i think i think it's going to be great but i think the main i think the main point of this movie is just to get the brand out there because i I could go on and on about this but something that nintendo does really well is that they take advantage of what kind of time frame they're in and when i say that i mean for example Nintendo's known for always being about five years behind on their on their hardware, right? Well, what's the benefit of that, right? The benefit of that is one, everything's going to be cheaper, right? So everything that they push out isn't going to be up to high standards. They're going to make more profit off of the hardware they sell. And yes. the thing about Nintendo is like, if you think if you go back to the Wii U days, seventy percent of the games that came out on the Wii U were Nintendo exclusive, right? So the Wii U was out of date, obviously. It was cheap to make. All their games are Nintendo exclusive. And yeah, they're making this movie, but they're going to put everything in Nintendo pictures in the future. They're kind of... I, I, I don't like saying this, but I've always said this. I feel like Nintendo's kind of been the apple of gaming, right? They do things their way. They stick to their uh their bad ideas right they're always behind and they still charge you a lot of money 
right? But and they do it, they do it in their own way all the time, and it still works. They're winning in their own category. And it's like if you're not gonna win in the top categories of like high spec hardware, you're gonna go back for a little bit and just wait and see what happens. Like they've been doing that for years, right? They've been looking at like the Xbox and they've been looking at the PS5 and they've just been riding their own horse. Um so it's just crazy to me that they're going to go through with this. Obviously, I, I mean, I think it's going to do phenomenally well, which is like, which, is, obvi- which is great. I'm telling which you, is, dude, which is great. billion dollars easy. But what scares me is that I don't, I don't know if you wanted to go into the next subject of like, you know, the future of Nintendo with next gen consoles and stuff. But usually with Nintendo, when they do really well, they just get so cocky and then they just mess up. And Dude. it's like what goes up must come down, and that guess, happens to I them a lot. I want to talk a little bit about Metroid, but we yeah, can, please, let's uh, do it. Oh yeah, yeah, then we'll get to the next gen. So all right, yeah, perfect, I guess, perfect. I guess maybe give final word on the movie. I'm excited for it. I think it makes a billion dollars easy. I think most of the voice cast is going to do well. I think it launches a Nintendo Cinematic Universe. I believe Chris Pratt already slipped up and mentioned that there's a that they're they're planning that and that the there's going to be an end credit scene that alludes to a sequel so make sure you stick around um, wow but overall i think it's going to be awesome i don't know any final words for you before we move on to metroid um i'm really excited for jack black's song <laughs> he has a like song? Some, some 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 well he made a post on instagram and it was like him with it was like a selfie of him with a Bowser plushie and there was sheet music in the background. And the title at the very top said peaches, but then the camera, the picture cuts off to the right. So you don't see the rest of the full title. Whoa. But it was all these like eighth notes, sixteenth notes, quarter notes, and people were already taking that picture and transcribing it. Um, because it had the key signature and everything. And people on Twitter were being like, Oh, this is what it's gonna sound like. So I want I want this to be I don't want it to be a musical, but I want some I want some banger the songs. The only reason I'm okay with this is because it's Jack Black. Right. That's the only reason I'm okay with this. Um but yeah, yeah. let's uh let's move on to Metroid. Now listen, I'm not cool. the biggest Metroid fan. I just want to be clear about that. I'm not mm-hmm. the biggest Metroid fan, but I'd be lying if I said what I'm seeing isn't exciting me, and I'll tell you why. One, and I'm not sure many people know this. That Metroid Prime remaster, that's not just like a glow up. That's not just like a resolution glow up. They rebuilt all of yeah, those assets. They did. From the yeah, ground that's up. That's what Sakurai was saying. He tweeted it. He was like remasters like this are no joke. They are not easy to do. So the fact they built it from the ground up like that again is is insane. And I think it's a good sign like if you're a Metroid fan, you have a lot to be excited about because if they remastered oh. that one you're probably gonna get the whole trilogy remastered. You good? you good? Oh yeah, I'm good. I yeah, I just had to move my leg real quick. Okay, want to make sure you didn't shit your pants. Anyway, <laughs> no, no, I just I I'm using I'm using this, and I like I got up and it's kind of you know a little broken right here, but um, I respect. But yeah, the, go ahead. Well, what I was what I was gonna say is that uh, if you're a Metroid fan, like the Switch is probably the best console for you for a metroid fan right because you got metroid dread you have the re the remaster that came out uh metroid prime 4 is, 4 is going to be out they had a bunch of like classic games come out um i don't know it, it's it's wild to me that metroid dread has been in development since the 3ds like it was originally going to be a 3ds game yeah that is and then nuts. they just they just kept it going and going and um they waited for the perfect time because you know the Wii U was shit. But uh yeah, I think it's uh <laughs> I I love I love Metroid. That was actually when I got a DS, like the old school DS, the very first gen, it came with that Metroid demo and I was blown away. I was actually kind of scared. Um because it was like so it was so haunting, you know. But uh Did yeah, I, I No, I didn't play Dread. I I got like 80% through it. I keep telling myself I'll finish it one day, but regardless, like I did have a really good time with the game. I mean, I, uh, I saw the ending and stuff. So Yo, you do that, bro. <laughs> like, I, like, 
You're like you you crawl around YouTube looking for endings of games and movies you've never played or watched. I you're a different animal, bro. You're a different animal. But I only I only don't do that for games I know I'm gonna play or I really I really love. Um it's so funny because my my cousin was like he was like, yeah, me and my dad are going to go see the new Marvel movie. And I was like, oh, the ending's really good. Like, it's great. He was, and he's like, you didn't watch the movie. And I was like, I know, but the post credit scene's really good. And he was like, he was like, screw you. <laughs> I just, I, I did that with, with FF7 remake and everything. So um, anyway, but yeah, yeah, I think... I think if you're a Metroid fan, this is definitely the best timeline for you, especially for the Switch. And you can tell that, like, I wish Nintendo would take their other brands and act like they did with Metroid. Like, I this wish they would. This is what I want to get into, but keep yeah. going. No, you're good. I was just going to say, like, it's the perfect example of how they could make their brands come out on top again. Like, Metroid Prime win or Metroid Dread winning that award at the game awards was huge like for the company you know to bring something like that back alive like to make it feel that dark and make it that difficult um is something they haven't really done with a not a lot of their nintendo brand games not you know that, like they go ahead finish finish it off no no i was gonna say like name name a nintendo game that's really hard majora's mask but that was freaking 20 years that's ago. not that's not like 20 years yeah like for the switch for the okay, Switch, name hard, one Nintendo game that's hard. hard. First party Nintendo game on the Switch. And you can't say Smash, because that doesn't count. <laughs> Third parties don't count either. You raise a good point, my friend. Just looked at all just, just looked at my whole library and I was like, ah, all these are and kinda easy. Yeah. Yeah, third parties third parties don't count. Third third party games do not count. I'll tell you this. Either. What I found most impressive about Metroid Dread was that they could take a game, take a game, give it a new entry in the series, but make it a retro style game. We don't need everything mm -hmm. to be the bee's knees. It doesn't need to be the latest and greatest. You can make a really good side scroller with the tech you have now, and for mm -hmm. a lot of people that's good enough. Metroid Dread was the first Metroid game I've played since Metroid Prime 2 on the GameCube, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I yeah. had a really good time with it. I'll, I'll probably skip over Metroid Prime Remastered just because I played it back in the day. I don't have much of a desire to play it now. If they remaster Metroid Prime 3, I'll probably play that because that's the one of the trilogy that I missed. Yeah. And, you know, if Metroid Prime 4 looks good, I'll be on board just because, like, uh, mm -hmm. honestly, not just because, like, I am, like, moderately interested in metroid i would like to encourage nintendo to revive some of these older ips because some of yeah. my favorite ips like Star Fox, are just like locked away you know and it's like mm -hmm. i would really like to by the way we're gonna get into the chat but i gotta let them in they're shouting bayonetta at us for first party games that are difficult i've never played bayonetta so i don't know but we can take but Bayon but but bayonetta's like not like it was exclusive to Nintendo, but it's not. It's not owned by Nintendo. No, it is. Is it? Nintendo or did they, when did they did they did they buy, did they buy them out? Yes. Or okay, yes. that's I'm I'm talking like day one Nintendo games. That is a cop like, out. it's not. That think about it, dude. Out. Think about it. It's listen, dude. The it is the only Metroid is the only series in Nintendo right now that has started from the beginning is here now and they've been able to evolutionize it in a manner that's more suited for adults and that's more difficult. And I don't really know any other games other than Zelda. And that one's not even like, you know, I feel like that one doesn't even really count. Like, but, but the, the thing is no company takes something and makes it fresh and better and re innovates it to a point like Nintendo does, right? Like even even Smash, like or let's let's go back to Breath of the Wild. Like Breath of the Wild Miyamoto was or um not Miyamoto, but the developers of uh of Zelda were saying that 
one thing they really admire about the West is Mickey Mouse, right? So when they say that, they go into detail about how over time, Mickey Mouse has changed to fit with modern times. And they felt like they had to really do that mm. with Link. And they did that really, really well. Um, and I think Nintendo's been doing that with Zelda. They've been doing that with Metroid. They've, to an extent, they've been doing it with Mario. And obviously Smash is like the prime example of taking old IPs and refreshing it and giving it to a point where it's still faithful, but it's still modern. And, um, you know, if anyone can do that with old IPs, like they could do that with F-Zero. They could do that with Earthbound. They could do that with Star Fox. Like there's no one, there's no one better to do that than Nintendo, but they just, you know, they don't like money. <laughs> you know, and I think part of it too is like Kid Icarus is another one, by the way. I'd kill yeah, for another and Kid, Kid Icarus, Icarus. game. But yeah. Like, take and I'm just gonna be biased here. Take Star Fox, bro. I don't need open open galaxy uh, exploration. Like I don't need the next. I don't need you to make game of the year. Just make a just make a cool short game. You know, a cool rail mm. shooter like Star Fox 64 was. I don't know. I just don't think. I think when it comes to a lot of these IPs, a lot of us aren't asking Nintendo to reinvent the wheel or to give us game of the year F Zero, game of the year Kid Icarus. It's like no, just just make a solid game, you know, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. I will did say, you see? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you go, you go, you go. Oh, I was going to say, did you see that guy that I was like at a Nintendo investors meeting and he paid like $30,000 to ask a question and he asked about remixing F-Zero? Did you see that? Hold on, let me pull it up. Let me pull, pull it up. up. Um, really? Yeah, it was By like an way, investors we meeting. Called, we got called out for the difficulty thing. A lot of people brought up Fire Emblem. Maybe <laughs> Fire Emblem's Fire Emblem's Fire Emblem's easy. I was gonna say that, dude. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, both on like classic mode and the mode where they don't die. Like I breeze through it, man. I don't know. If you go to like all the way up to the hardest difficulty, though, then you are gonna have some problems. Yeah, but that's like, but that's like I don't think you can choose your difficulty in Metroid Dread. I think it's like you just it's go just, and it's gonna be difficult. See, now, okay, now we're getting specific, and now you, you got me again because you're right. Metroid Dread at a default is just freaking hard, man. Yeah, I don't I don't mean to be like Mister Mister Correct oh, Correcty Pants or anything. You're being that. But guy. I'm just but I'm just saying like Fire Emblem's easy. Bayonetta was bought out. Like it's not it's <laughs> not from the ground up exclusive. And like I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm just saying, you know. Um uh let's see. Die Hard Nintendo fans spent over $40,000 buying stock and then asked top executives why the company won't make more of a fan favorite series, which is F0. See if I um, had fuck you money, this is the shit I'd be doing with my money. I know. I know, right? That's so Okay, let's see. Um so he paid that much to ask the question, and they said, we are always considering how to develop new titles and remakes that can be enjoyed by many players. <laughs> Is what the official said back to the guy who spent that much money asking the question. Right. I'll, send, I'll send you the article. But it was, it was basically like, this diehard fan has apparently spent over a million dollars asking questions. Let's see. Yes, oh, spends, spends 40K on stock to ask Nintendo about F Zero. Here's a better one. I remember that when, when that shit happened. That dude's wife probably hates him. He probably doesn't have a wife. She's probably gone. <laughs> she, she, she's she's not. She was not home when he got back. Um, five point six million yen on a hundred shares back in February. Um. Let's see. After asking about F Zero, Nintendo's president offered an answer that was basically "thanks for asking, but no." That, that's what I get when you tell me what his response was. I get, "Oh, thanks for asking. We'll see you at the next meeting." Yeah, yeah. Kevin and Chow, give give us Mother Three. Hey, hey, like hey. I, I totally feel that. That's I so think, true. I, I love this because I think they're. I think Chad is still hung up on the difficulty thing because now they're saying, "What about Earthbound?" Earthbound's not hard. It's just emotional. It's emotionally hard. It's emotionally difficult to get through. But other than that, 
It's nothing compared to Metroid Dread. Like it's a, it's a little it's a little grindy. Like you have to farm and stuff, but it's not like I don't mind that, especially in an RPG. I don't mind that. Yeah, if you if you got time, that's cool. But it's it's like. But I don't know. You know. I'd love to see them get all these IPs involved again. And honestly, it's something I've been talking about forever, dude. And you let me know what you think of this. I think Nintendo's sitting on a cash cow. They should make their own Kingdom Hearts. And I brought this up before. It's, <laughs> it's a cash cow. If you create a new IP about a character who goes to Nintendo worlds, then you don't have to remaster F-Zero. You just have an F-Zero world in this new IP. You don't have to make a new Star Fox. You have a Star... Look, obviously I'd prefer a full-fledged Star Fox game, but if something like this existed and I could get my Kid Icarus fix, my F-Zero fix, my Earthbound fix, and my Star Fox fix with one sixty dollars purchase, I'm in, baby. I'm in. And I think you that's... make a new IP. Yeah. Which, I don't... That's what I like. I love it when a freaking company takes a risk like that. Yeah, I just, I mean, they're they're obviously sitting on a cash, like on a, on a giant pile of cash, Game of and not doing Hero. anything. Come on. The 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 thing is though, is that they're investing in the long term goal, right, for the future, and I think they've kind of realized that with the Switch too. Is that yeah, they could do remakes and they could do ports and stuff like that, which we'll get into, but. I think right now they've picked out the best investments to build their brand and to get people to play the games they already have available instead of just making something new, which is kind of annoying because like for me, I love like, yeah, remakes and reboots are cool, but like I'm such a big fan of new IPs. Like I thought Splatoon is awesome, right? It's them going into the shooter genre. Yeah but in a way that's so themselves I and agree. it's not I like gory and crazy and it's I creative don't freaking too. like Splatoon, but I can appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. And I, and I, I think it, it just, I think it just fits so well. And, um, I know they have some new IPs they're cooking up right now too. Like, I think, I think we can get a new IP this year cause it's been that long of a time span. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they, you know, one day I think I think we'll get I think when I'm like 60 and Kingdom Hearts is still around and the story's still going, if god forbid that's happened cuz I kind of don't want that to. I mean, no, I want that story with me baby, that story dies with Nomura. Yeah, I know. That's a, that's a thing too, for sure. But I but it's like there's so many fans of Pokémon and Kingdom Hearts. It's like, man, I would love one day to like like for Red to meet Sora, I don't think I, I don't know. I don't think that'll ever happen. Nah, like, but happen. him, I don't think it'll happen either. But I, I but Sora you know, I getting the Smash say, is I the used closest to say thing that it could happen if Disney bought out Nintendo. But the way the world's going lately, it looks like it's more likely mm -hmm. Nintendo could buy out Disney if things keep up the way they're going. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, Mario, that Mario movie is gonna outsell every Marvel movie this year. It will and Disney more movie. Yeah, well, yeah, Marvel it is movie. Disney, and right? If you don't think that all these Hollywood producers are going to be like, get Nintendo on the phone after they see those numbers right. coming, especially when you consider right. the comic book movies as far as profits, not necessarily revenue, but as far as profits, Marvel movies and comic book movies in general have just been on mm -hmm. a decline. Like Shazam just right. lost a ton of money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you know, some right. Some Marvel movies either broke even or some of those even lost money so when you're gonna see mario come in crack a billion dollars and mm -hmm. again i and you're starting to see more video game adaptations happening you know between ghost of tsushima you know you have the last of us tv show you're starting to see it come in now and bleed in you know i've spoken at great length about how that actually really concerns me i think the mm -hmm. first wave of it like this wave of video game movies we're probably about to get are gonna be mm -hmm. awesome but in about right. ten to fifteen years, I actually think it's going to get awful. I really do. They need they need to be careful because I think they're going to get super greedy, and then they're just going to push stuff out, and they need to like they need to not. But I th I think if anyone mm -hmm. can control themselves to not do that, it would be Nintendo, other than anyone else. Because like like what you were saying about Disney and Nintendo, like when I was talking about Pokemon, like the Pokemon company is like is separate from Nintendo, even though like Nintendo owns like a percentage of the pokemon brand um 
that's I mean I'm I'm scared. You know, Pokemon's gonna get out, get bought out by Disney one day. But definitely uh, not. They don't have the capital anymore. Not anymore. They, if it were like, like if it crazy, like layoffs if like it, crazy. Their movies don't mm-hmm. make as much money as they used to. The parks still do well. The parks still. If do it was like, well. if it was like seven years ago, maybe. Yeah. But you know, changed, but now, dude. but now How things quickly? have changed quickly. How yeah, quickly. quickly. Things change. I know that's that's the thing. But um, yeah, I I mean, I would love it if um, because you know, Nintendo they they were gonna make a live action Zelda series on Netflix. Do you remember that? And, I'm and it got so leaked. Glad it didn't happen. I'm glad it didn't happen too. I think this was the best, the best way to go. You I know? don't think Zelda's fit for films unless, unless the story follows Princess Zelda. You cannot, it's like why you cannot yeah. follow Link around for two hours. You can't. He's a silent protagonist, and I don't see any way you can break that without pissing off half the fan base. So it's like why would you why would you make a TV show when he doesn't even talk in the game? You know, like it's already it's already distorting like. The whole well, the idea of I Zelda. It, the way I saw, like, if, if okay, if if there were crackheads at Nintendo that put me in charge, you know, here's <laughs> how I would do it: is one, you'd have to follow either Zelda or Ganondorf, right? Imagine mm. a Zelda show told from the perspective of Ganondorf. That could be cool. Or yeah. You could do it from Zelda's perspective, or if you follow Link around, let's say in theory it was a a show about Ocarina of Time. Navi mm-hmm. could be the sort of vocal leader of the show or whoever the yeah. sort of navigating partner is could sort of be the voice but i just don't yeah. think i just don't think link is set for visual media it, it's a I game don't think so it's either. a game yeah. series especially with the way the series like has been the past several years i think that would have been perfect to like destroy it or like just bring it down yeah. and i'm glad they didn't i'm glad they didn't they didn't do that either um but yeah i think this is just i mean the movie is going to do well like everything's finished, everything's done. I think this is definitely the start of Nintendo just getting their brand out more in different ways. And like Miyamoto was compared to Disney a couple months ago and he hated that, which I totally understand. Um and he didn't take it like personally to Walt himself. But oh, yeah, he's not friends with Werner von Braun or anything, you know. <laughs> well, it's if just you know, you know. It's, he's just I think he's just he wants I, I just I admire creators who are very picky about their IP and like Nintendo's the top of the food chain for that. So and I hope that never um, changes. I hope that never changes. Yeah, I feel that for sure. Um, we're going to talk about we were going to talk about consoles, right? Yeah, we were going to talk quick. about the future. Maybe the uh, next gen. Con- Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to talk about the next gen consoles. Uh, okay. Maybe take a little quick bathroom break. Um, cool and then we'll uh we'll get into the chat so cool perfect how are you feeling about next gen next gen nintendo when do you see it coming what do you think it is i want your talk i want your take okay so the thing the thing about nintendo you know what i was saying is like they've been doing their own thing very well in their own category like for a while like their hardware has always been delayed back but they've been thriving off of it like making um profit from old hardware like still having a lot of their games on the market but the thing is man you can't do that forever and time is ticking and even with like hyrule warriors on the switch that game would not run it was just unplayable can i tell you something the biggest letdown Mm -hmm. you know my wife and i were so excited to do co-op yeah and you literally can't you can't yeah you just can't do it can't mm-hmm. it's awful why yeah. even include it if it's not gonna run it's like even with even with Link's awakening the developers apparently had nightmares of the game not running fully at 60 fps and it doesn't it still doesn't like it goes on and off even with a little game like that um scarlet and violet like there are just so many instances where but you know that's it's not. Like, I hate to interrupt you, but that is not the no, you're shortcoming good. of the Switch. Because Xenoblade Three runs just fine on the Nintendo mm-hmm. Switch. It is. It's not a shortcoming of the hardware. Even though the hardware is due for an upgrade, these mm-hmm. games not being able to run is a fault of tight deadlines rather than the Switch's hardware. Because there are that games, is true. Yeah, you know, like Xenoblade Three or like Breath of the Wild, which for the most part can run perfectly fine 
But then you have games mm-hmm. which, if you've noticed, aren't from Nintendo themselves. It's usually a spinoff like Hyrule Warriors or it's Scarlet mm-hmm. and Violet made by the Pokemon Company. I, I think mm-hmm. that's more... And uh, I'm going on a tangent, but you know, no, I good. understand that you probably have to do a, more work on the Switch to get it to run well. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's just not compatible right. with these tight deadlines the industry has now. But I don't know. As yeah. much as they're due for an upgrade, I'm not going to let companies get away with blaming the Switch's hardware for not being able to run at a decent FPS. Right, right. Well, if, sorry, sorry to be a pokey freak, but yeah, Go it was it. developed by, by G- Game Freak, not the Pokemon that's company. That's why you're here. But, but no, you're good. <laughs> but, you're um, but what I was, was going to say is that it only adds up to time because it's just going to be harder and harder for third parties and other brands to kind of deal with the switch when they're using totally different adjustments for different games themselves and that's that's just the thing i'm worried about because the switch got really lucky with porting all these third-party games and stuff like that but you can't keep doing that forever Mm -mm. um so i'm not i'm not blaming the switch's hardware but i am reminding people that the console is about to be it's going to be seven years old soon um the switch doesn't have any themes it doesn't have music because it doesn't have enough ram for some of the games like it takes forever to load things like it is it it does get to a point where they're doing so well that i just want them to make an upgraded switch too that can play switch games but Knowing Nintendo, I think they're already working on a new console, and that's that's what they're gonna do. And I think it's not gonna work out because well, Nintendo's that's, always been like that. That's what I was gonna say to you. I actually think they're gonna ride out the Switch another couple years. They're gonna mm-hmm. ride this thing out for another. At least, I honestly think they're gonna they're gonna try. They're gonna try. <laughs> they're gonna because I think you're right that their next system, they're not gonna do this. They're not gonna do this because think about it. Here's an example. Mario Kart. Mario Kart sold 30 million copies. Okay? Mm-hmm. And that's a port. That is a Wii U port. Mm-hmm. They sold that game twice. They don't need to make another Mario Kart. You know what's a Wii U port? Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, we're getting our first Switch <laughs> Zelda game six years later. That's exclusive, why think, exclusive, exclusive to the Switch. That's yeah, why I think they're gonna try and ride this thing out another couple years. And here's how I see it: the next system will not be backwards compatible. You know why? I know. They want you to buy Mario Kart again. Also, S- Smash is a port, technically. <laughs> Smash is a port too. But they're going to want you to buy Mario Kart again. They want that 30 million copies sold again. I don't think it's going to be backwards compatible. If anything, what I could see happening is similar with what happened to the PS2. Now, if you recall, pretty much for the entire PlayStation 3's life cycle, new games kept coming to the PS2. Even though PS3 was backwards compatible, that's not how I'm comparing it. But through Mm -hmm. the whole PS3 life cycle, new games still kept coming to the PS2. I think what Nintendo's going to do, they're going to launch a new console that will not be backwards compatible with the Switch, but the Switch is going to keep making games. Mm. That's what I think. That's what I think they're going to try and pull. Interesting. Because I don't, because I don't Pro, think... Well, Pro, if the Switch ahead. Pro is backwards compatible, those, most of the, the casual gamer is not going to buy it. Nintendo has a huge casual audience. Again, they have diehards, you know, like yourself, you know, much like myself. Who we're in it for the flagship IP. We want that Legend of Zelda. We want that Super Smash Brothers. We want that um we want that Pikmin or we want that Xenoblade or that Bayonetta. But they also have a huge audience that loves their Mario Kart, that loves their mm-hmm. Animal Crossing, that loves the more casual nature of the Switch. And that's not anything Nintendo should give up. But I will say right now, two things. I don't see the next console being backwards compatible. And I think Animal Crossing is the next consoles launch title oh really interesting not gonna be zelda okay they usually go with zelda zelda is usually their go-to you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's usually their go-to is to have a zelda game if not ready at launch within the first year or so of the console cycle i don't think that's the case anymore zelda used to be their biggest ip next to mario 
but that's not true anymore. Mm-hmm. Animal Crossing is. Right. Animal Crossing might even be bigger than Mario. Because, yeah, Mario Kart sells a lot of copies because it's a party game. But compare mm-hmm. Animal Crossing to Mario Odyssey, I don't know the exact numbers. I'm actually going to look that up. But I think Animal Crossing outso- outsells Odyssey. It did, I think, because it's it Mario Mario Kart's number one, and then I think Animal Crossing's number two. Yep. Yep. Okay, check it. Mario Kart came in. I said 30 million copies. I lowballed this son of a bitch. Mario Kart came in at 52 <laughs> million copies. Animal Crossing, 41 million copies. Super Smash Brothers, 30 million copies. So between mm-hmm. Mario Kart and Animal Crossing, you almost have sales of 100 million units. If you don't think the next gen console is going to try and get these Mario Kart and Animal Crossing players to buy a new console, you're insane because that's their biggest audience. Yeah. You and I, we like Smash it is. And Zelda. But Smash and Zelda sell 30 million copies. Mario Kart and Animal Crossing sell 40 to 50 million copies. If I'm the bean counters yeah. in the administration's office, that's what I'm focusing on. Is that what I would yeah. do as a diehard fan? No. I'm like that crackhead who bought $40,000 worth of stock who's saying, where's the next F-Zero? That's the kind of guy I yeah. am. But the guys running the show right. in that company, they're going to look at the Mario Kart and the Animal Crossing sales and probably Pokemon as well and say, that's mm-hmm. what we're going to focus on. Zelda games, right. those take too long to make. We can't bank on that. They're going to bank it's, on this casual yeah. audience. It's 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 crazy because Animal Crossing is the perfect example of like Nintendo not knowing what they're sitting on or not knowing what they're doing because like animal crossing is the game that got people to go out and buy a switch light mm-hmm. and play it for hours on end. And it's like, yeah, COVID happened, whatever. But yeah, so this is, this is, this is what I think is going to happen. <sighs> well, sorry, let me, let me start with this. This is what I want to happen, right? What I want them to do is that I want them to take a good example from the three DS. What I want them to do because you have the original 3DS, mm-hmm. and then you have the 3DS XL, right? You have the Switch, you have the Switch Lite, and now you have the Switch OLED. And for this 3DS, they also had the 3DS, um, like just the, the 2DS, right? And then the 2DS XL. But then they made the new Nintendo 3DS, right? So with that new Nintendo 3DS, you got a little bit of a hard hardware um, a bump up, and then you could only buy certain games on the new nintendo 3ds xl right so what was a game like that that they've already been that they've already done they've been porting forever xenoblade xenoblade one was also a new nintendo 3ds xl exclusive because it was the only one with that hard hardware upgrade that could handle the game so what i would do if i was nintendo but they're not going to do it no. is that they make a new Nintendo switch. Right. But that's obviously I not going to happen, you, but it's like, this has never worked for them in the past. Like the three DS was awesome, but the three DS did not sell out, outsell the base DS. And then they made a Wii no. U, which was like a pro Wii mm-hmm. and that completely flopped. So they're sitting there and they're going, why are we going to make the pro thing when the three DS sold less than the DS and the Wii mm-hmm. U sold way less than the Wii. Like they, you know, if again, if I'm working in that office and it's my job to make money, it's not my job to make cool games. It's my job to make money. I look at that trend and go, no, we're not doing this a third time. We're going to, yeah. we're going to let the switch last 10 years, eight to 10 years. And then we're going to make a new thing. And then smaller mm-hmm. developers can still launch things on the switch. Or you'll have some crazy devs that make a game that's compatible with the new Nintendo and the Switch. Who knows? Right, right. So and, I, I just don't you see know, them doing it again. The Wii U almost freaking I know. killed the company. Why are they going to make mm. the, the Switch U? You? you know what I mean? I just don't yeah. see it happening. Well, that's the thing. They're they're on top right now for almost every everything in every way. And that's when I get scared for Nintendo, right? Like, they were the company was already... The president has talked about how they're already working on a new console, right? Mm-hmm. So he said that at meetings. And what were his words? We're exploring new and fun, creative ways to play. Almost implying like, oh, you, you know what I mean? Like it's the writing is on the wall, man. I, I, yeah. And honestly, I feel like they're stuck in this conundrum because the whole internet will not shut up about the Switch Pro. Well, you know, the Switch Pro. So I think it was... 
I think Forbes reported on it or um, I think they reported like way back in the day, right before the Switch released, that there would be three versions, a Switch, a Switch Lite and a Switch Pro, right? Which is like, you know, what what do they mean by Pro? Who knows? But it's oh, kind of crazy to me. It's called an OLED. Maybe or maybe or maybe there was a higher end spec version and they put it away. I'm not I'm not sure. But they did have patents released for a Joy-Con. Have you seen those? No. So, yeah, so they had patents released that they got rid of, but it was basically for a Joy-Con, but the top of the Joy-Con right here goes back and it folds. So it's like a Joy-Con that would go that way and then you could do different things with that. And I was like, "Guys, just stop <laughs> like i was like i was like you guys are doing so well right now just like just don't mess it up but they're going to because the even like with the 3ds i don't know if you've seen uh or if you've read reggie's new book i think it's no. called uh, what's it called it's like the game is over hold on let me see here let me see uh Let me see. Let me see. For disrupting. Games. Sorry. Dis, disrupting the game mm. uh, is what he's is what is one of his books that's released recently. And he was talking about how for the West, when they released the 3DS, it was obviously way too much money. And he told Nintendo of Japan, like, don't do this. It's way too much money. People aren't going to buy it. And guess what happened? It was a complete flop and they had to put the price down. So for the people who paid all that extra money for the 3DS, they actually got this thing called like the Nintendo Ambassador Program, where if you paid for a 3DS at that really high price at the start before they lowered it, you would get the specific software exclusive oh. to you that came with a bunch of free games that you couldn't even get on the eShop. Um, and Reggie, like, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be like judgmental, but like, you know, Reggie has put up with so much crap like for overseas trying to get negotiations working and stuff like this. He said when the new um, president of Nintendo of Japan came in, he when he was still president of America, uh, Nintendo of America, he was like, I have high hopes because this new president understands the Western market more. And you can totally see that mm -hmm. just from the switch, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just, I think Nintendo's, gonna make a new console and it's gonna be out in the next four years and i think it's just i think it's gonna flop but i really don't want it to because the switch to me is like my favorite or one That's of my it. favorite the three i haven't i haven't come to the conclusion yet because the cycle isn't finished like my favorite system of all time is probably the 3ds um but i just the the wii or the 3ds but i'm just i'm a little i'm a little hesitant at the moment, because, uh, you know, we had the GameCube, which didn't sell well. The Wii sold amazing. What, and the what Wii U was bad. And this is what I mean. You know? It's like I don't blame Nintendo for being all over the place because the GameCube was them keeping up with the tech. GameCube mm -hmm. was them saying, we're going to be just as powerful as Xbox. We're going to be just as powerful as PS2. And it was just like, didn't work. You know, so it's yeah. like you see why they no longer prioritize keeping up to date with the tech because it's like that didn't work yeah. for them in the past. Dude, correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong about this, but. I've been, I don't know, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, but them being so particular and stubborn to their own ideas cost them, like, like, to them, it, it cost them Final Fantasy VII, yeah. you know? Like, just, just, I think about that example all the time. It's like, they wanted that cartridge so bad, and they went, because well, Final Nintendo Fantasy games were, like, Final all with Fantasy Nintendo. were like this, dude. I know. They were. Yeah. It was, it was all, it was all Nintendo. Mm -hmm. It was, like, all on Nintendo consoles. And then, right when 7 came, you know, the, the biggest and the baddest, um, they just, they had to be stingy, and they messed up on that opportunity. That's why I thought cloud getting in smash was the biggest thing because it was basically an independent contractor like sakurai making an agreement between two of the most famous video company video game companies in the world and having an agreement and bringing it together and they kind of have done that more and you've seen more like square enix ports to the switch and stuff like that too which has been great like the chrono uh remaster thing that chrono cross. came out yeah chrono cross that came out for this like exclusively for the switch and yep. stuff like that it's like it's like, man, I wonder if Nintendo just thinks about that that type of crap. 
you know like uh, things like that don't matter as much nowadays but um they just they they're on top and then they lose at like the perfect moment and that's what scares me because i love them to death like they're my favorite they're one of my favorite video game like they're number two they're number two um for my favorite video game companies but yeah i uh i i hope that we get a little more life with the switch because i don't want it to end it's um, it's gonna it's their golden egg and i think they know it i think they know yeah. whatever they follow up with probably won't be as successful um mm-hmm. again look we could be wrong i could be wrong switch pro could really be coming i just don't yeah. see it i don't s- I struggle to see why Nintendo would want to do it. I don't. I see exactly why the devs would want it, right? I see exactly yeah, why the people who make right. games would love a Switch Pro. But from a business standpoint, mm-hmm. the last time they did this, it flopped. So right. I don't know what they're going to do. I think they'll ride it out. And I think their next console, look, it's going to be one or two things. They're either going to do something really innovative that will either hit like the Wii hit, or will flop. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Or maybe they play it safe and just go, hey, we're going to make a Switch Pro. It won't sell as much, but who knows? At the end of the day, yeah. I, um, I'm excited for what they have in store. I think, you know, they have a lot of things going their way right now. Mm-hmm. A lot of things going their way. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of moves they make throughout the next few years. Yeah. And I think, and I think people at the company also realize how much of a bad position they were in back in the Wii U days too. Like, you know, the higher ups at Nintendo were taking like pay cuts just to keep yeah. employees there and well, to keep Iwata the company. was like that, right? Yeah, Iwata, Iwata did that. Miyamoto did that. Everyone at Nintendo did that for, for the workers. And it's like, it's like, dude, thank God they, they got out of that rut, mm-hmm. you know? So I, th- I think they are a bit more aware of that now. But I did hear the the president was saying like yeah you know like the switch sales are great but we but we don't want to like like get too up on ourselves about it which is so refreshing you know um but yeah i'm i'm hopeful but the switch has just been like the perfect console for me too because nintendo's always been the king of handhelds and now that they're doing it in this type of way is like yeah i don't want the hybrid perfect. nature of what they're doing to go away i know me I too me too just in, yeah just improve on it but you know they're like they're like oh now that we got money we're gonna invest in all this crazy stuff and again they're about to make a lot of money this year this is gonna be a b- I know. big year for nintendo oh, i know right man. Now. um so is there anything about next gen that we haven't discussed yet that you wanted to touch on? Mm. Is this, does this count as like ports and stuff too? Or Shoot, go for it. Because I, I was just going to say like, as long as, as long as I get Smash, I'm, I'm cool. Like as long as they port Smash Ultimate, I'll be happy. You know, I don't really care. They're not going to. They're not going to port it. Yeah, they're not. They're not. Because remember what? One. Yeah, you know what happened with the Wii U? It's like people played shitty Smash Four for like like three years until <laughs> until Ultimate came out. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I don't know if you've been seeing interviews or like looking at his tweets, but I mean, Sakurai Sakurai's done. Like you can just tell he's 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 out of it. They and I don't know. New, I, they need a new visionary. You know what's scary though is that they they tried to get one for Ultimate. They hired someone completely different to take over and develop Ultimate, and it didn't go well. So they had to bring Sakurai back in, and he did it. That's why this game to me is like so special. And I think if they were smart, they would they would just port it. Because the thing about Smash but Four, if they ported it, they'd have to do more seasons of DLC. Or they'd have to give us a good reason, like if they improved online with it, like right now. Back net code. Like right now, I have a latency mod for my Switch. So like, if two people have perfect connect, like a perfect connection, and you don't have the latency mod, you can get to like six six frames like of lag, which is like you know that's that's okay. But with the with the mod, you get down to like 
two or three, which is a huge difference. And like the fact that it was possible, like to do it from a mod, it's like a company, if they were to rebuild it in a type of way, you know, that would be a big selling point for me. Like I'd pay over a hundred bucks if they had like net code with, uh, with smash ultimate. But I will say the tricky thing about having a game like ultimate come back on a different console is that I'm really worried about the whole, um, I'm worried about copyright and how that's going to affect the game. Like that's going to be the hardest thing because even though when you make a port, you're still going to have to renew all this copyright. And there are like hundreds, if not over a thousand types of copyright in this game. Like Grand Theft Auto. It's a legal nightmare. Sora getting in Smash was a legal nightmare. And I think, um, you know, like Grand Theft Auto, when they make their remakes, some of the songs that you listen to when you turn on the radio, all of them from the first release of a grand theft auto game aren't in the remasters of it because they couldn't get the copyright to some of the songs and that's what i'm worried about for some of these um and that's why some of these smash games port, you're probably gonna get a whole new smash i know and i and we will i think we will too because it's like because they have to think about the future too like they're gonna they're gonna make a new one um i'm really scared I think this one's going to be the, my favorite of all time because even in Japan, it's not called Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's called Smash Bros. Special Edition in Japan, little which more, is like a little more on the nose. A little more on the nose, a little yeah. More on the nose. They're a little so. Um, but anyway, yeah. But they've been. I mean, think about it. They they sold like what is it that Donkey Kong game? Um, Tropical. I forget freeze. what it's. Tropical Freeze, yeah. It sold like three or four times the amount of sales as it did on the Wii U just from the port. And it was the same with, um, I think it was like the Mario Wii U game that they released for the Switch. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. That sold so many more. Co- I mean, which obviously makes sense, but it's like, it's like, damn, dude, they've been, they've just been porting stuff forever and it's been working. Like if they end up doing it for the next console, it'll be fine too. Like, yeah. like I'll, I'll still buy it, but. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. Um, I know. On that note, I think now would be a good time for a little break. And uh, everyone in the chat, this is your chance. If you got any questions or comments, statements, anything, fire them in the chat now. We're going to take a quick break, uh, refill some water, go to the bathroom, and we'll Woo. get right back at it. So uh, let, me know the, the, let me know the hardest Nintendo game. Yeah, 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 That's... yeah. Let us know the hardest <laughs> Nintendo games. Whatever you got, fire it at us. We're going to be right back. Cool.
Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da. All right, we are back. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Do-do-do-do. Let's pull you guys up. All right. Oh, wow. How about a <laughs> um, punch out? Oh, that's from a while ago. Okay, so. Kevin Ribeiro asked, how about a new punch out? Like the Mike Tyson punch out. I mean, I'm for it, man. You know what I mean? I don't know if you can get Tyson on board again, but, you know, he's a lot friendlier these days. If you could strike a deal with him back in the 80s and 90s, I'm sure you could do it now. Um, Bro, I need to I need to send you the video, but there's some like Instagram guy who he like he looks like super young. Like he looks like a kid, but he's like 20, 23 years old or something like that. And he's doing all those like uh he just does a bunch of memes or whatever like he just gives you a look or whatever and mike tyson was on a podcast with him and mike tyson picked him up and he thought he was mike tyson thought this grown guy was a kid and he starts going like on his neck and stuff like that i have to i had to send you i had to send you the video but there was another person like like doing hold on let me let me see if i can find it it, it oh cracks me Lord. up it was trending it was trending on on twitter but every time i think of mike tyson i think of that video oh my god it was it was so good what a sicko um, <laughs> let asks, what do you guys think of the Zonai being confirmed in the gameplay trailer? I love that. I mean, the Zonai are very yeah. new to Zelda, at least as far as I'm concerned. The first time they were mentioned was in Breath of the Wild. Uh, if you guys are out there, if you guys are some Zelda nuts watching Zelda theories out there, I have this theory about the Zonai. I don't know if it's been mentioned or done before. Maybe you guys can let me know. But I'm starting to think the Zonai are where both the Sheikah clan and the Yiga clan come from. I'm starting to think that the Zonai were once this unified tribe and that they schismed off one direction towards the Sheikah, another direction towards the Yiga. So I don't know, maybe someone's already done that. I've been thinking about making a video on it, but I gotta, I gotta look around YouTube to see if anyone's done it first. So, you know, if any of you are out there, if you've seen that theory somewhere, let me know because I'm starting to think it. I don't know, what do you think of the Zonai? Again, there's not much to think about. They're relatively new. Right. I think it's I think it's good, like, kind of how we were talking about, like, new IPs and stuff. It kind of relates to, like, I just want new things to be brought up. Like, it's cool if there's a reference or two to, like, older games. But I do love, like, new enemies, like, new friends, new just something, just something different, especially with a game that's going to be the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Like, I, I do I do like that a lot. It's kind of exploring more of the idea of the areas we've already been playing on too, which I think right. is cool. Yeah. And again, it builds on breath of the wild makes it feel like a true sequel, you know? Yeah. Um, true. True. So let says could to Landy's misfortune mean more flashbacks slash memories. Yeah. I suppose, I suppose cause the zone, I are the ancient tribe. I mean, look, I'm not saying I'm anti flashback, anti memory. I just don't want the whole <laughs> plot dependent on it. Oh boy. Oh, my oh you're going to like this one. Umbra says the hardest, in, the hardest <laughs> Nintendo game I saw that. is special, special game called <laughs> Tree Appreciating Terra Definitive Edition. Oh, I can't wait to pre-order that. There's, there's no, there's no, no definitive edition is ever going to come out. The original of that game is not even true. It's all rumors. It's all speculation. Even though it was on the uh, GeForce leak or whatever, it, it ain't real. It ain't, it ain't it ain't out real. there. Pixar so. didn't happen. Do you know there's a there's a Terra Week happening on someone there's like a whole Twitter channel called Terra Week and they're like yeah. celebrating Terra for a week. Yeah. I blocked them. <laughs> <laughs> Get that shit off my feed. I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it to you. <laughs> Please do. As an avid Terra Sorry. defender. I'd like to see it. <laughs> Burning Baboon says, When I was younger, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga Last Boss was so hard. Took a multi-month break and came back to it. Sometimes you got to yeah. do that. Sometimes you got to take breaks. But that's one, that's one boss. That's not the whole game. The whole game of Dread is hard. Dread is... I'm just I'm fighting like I can't I, like, I can't I like I like I'm just saying 
That's the boss. The let says, oh, I haven't seen that at all. I thought they went extinct, but the Sheikah blue tech kind of looks like the Zonai green magic we've seen. Yeah, that's what kind of what's spiraling me. I'm like, I feel like the Zonai are sort of like the father clan to both the Sheikah and the Yiga. So I'll have to uh, look into that a little more. Uh, let's see. Umbra asks, when's the Tree and Landy podcast on Terra? You know, I'd like to find someone who's more of a Terra defender than I am to have him come on here and debate Tree. I'm not sure I'm the guy for the job, but I don't know. Tree, would you come on here to uh, to debate Terra? It, it, it depends who, because if it was with you, you're pretty, you're pretty, um, like you get your thoughts together, you present them well. You're going with the flow. You're listening. You'll understand. But some some Terra fans are like, you know. So I think uh, I think I would. I would because I think you would. I think it'd be a good exchange. I don't think it would be. It wouldn't be this emotional battle of this poorly written character, right? It would be. <laughs> it would. It would be a good discussion. Yeah, I. I would do it. I would. I would totally do it. But um. Nelly Belly asks, Landy, when is the next time you're commenting on one of Tree's Smash tournaments? Um, oh. Not anytime soon. <laughs> he's, wel- he's, he's welcome anytime. Yeah. You, you know, you're welcome. You've any, any... Clear to me. You've made that clear to me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Is, anytime I, you want to come on. I use my voice a lot between my day job, uh, the podcast, streaming. Commentating's a lot, too. Like yeah. Commenting's a lot. And, mm-hmm. you know, I am... I am trying to rest my voice a little more. I mentioned on the last episode, I want some of these podcasts to make it to three hours, but that can't happen until I rest my voice more. I'm up at like 5 a.m. True. every day. So even though it's only nine mm-hmm. o'clock at night, for like a normal person, this is like midnight to me. Like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm shot, I feel my that. body shot. I'm going to fall asleep once yeah. this podcast ends. But yeah, yeah well, once once things settle down for me a little bit and I, I, I one of the, here, here's my answer. One of these days. One of these days, one I do love the days, late. Bro. I do, I do love the really late Landy streams, though. I like those a lot. See, that's the thing is, so, I like streaming late too. But like, it's so late at night, my my voice late. and everything's just shot. Like, my voice sounds okay now, you know. But mm-hmm. you know, it gets a it gets a little creaky, a little horsey <laughs> late at night, you know. <laughs> he said, Nelly said, I want to hear the gravy. <laughs> I'll bring the gravy. I'll bring the gravy. I'll bring the gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I had some gravy and I carried it out of the restaurant. <laughs> Landy had his own gravy. And he Yeah. It out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like carrying buckets of gravy out of a building. Anyway. Right. <laughs> Dude, it's it's so funny because um my smash tag is Ava, just because I, I love the line like Ava had a mission and she carried it out. And everyone's like, Bro, is Ava your girlfriend? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> So funny, like dummy. Need a soundbite <laughs> of you saying gravy. Oh, we'll get it. We'll, that is you know, true. You're right. We need a good one. I gotta we add do. that. We do. I gotta add that. Um, let's see. I see guides in here. What's going on? I saw we had Andy in here earlier. Shout out to him, man. I hope you're doing well, Andy. Don't know if you're still number here. one. Number one terror defender. Is he? Nah, he's he's like number five. Number five. I think. Okay. I he's up like there though. 10. He I'm just not that adamant about it. Like I like Terra, but like I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like, Landy, be careful what you say. <laughs> 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 They're gonna be like, but, but, but you know, but I like Terra. I think, I think most people are just jealous that he's so jacked and that he's he's slinging aqua. He's got dude, aqua that's why right that's his what, arm, baby. Dude, Rob, he's been the inspiration. About that. He's been the inspiration for me to go to the gym. I want to get buff like Tara. Oh, you know? see, then you then you could really talk <laughs> shit. Like he ain't jacked. Look at those twig arms. Dude, I'm just dude. This is the, this is the thing. I'll bring up real quick. You know, he he skips leg leg day. You never see his legs. They're probably he probably skips leg day all the time at the gym. Probably a chicken. I like this take. No, you know? I like this take. This is this it's is true. The, this is the best Tara slander I've ever heard. I've never heard anyone accuse him Clip of skipping it. leg day. Clip it! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. But... Uh, okay. That's amazing. 
Kevin says I'm more of a Zayanort defender. Yeah, no, I will. I true, will, true. Me I too. I will defend Zayanort. I think he's one of Same. the greatest gaming villains of all time. That is a hill I will die on. Mm -hmm. That is a hill I right. will die on. You know what's funny? You know what might help me uh, preserve my voice for some longer podcasts? Maybe I can just stop yelling for two hours straight. I've considered that too, but I can't help it. I sit in the seat and I just get the energy. I gotta go. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't put that away. You yeah. gotta let it out. No. Yeah, but that's why I'm starting to do like on the weekend some more afternoon sort of podcast. Yeah, wake up, rest a bit. Yeah, I feel that. Still, it says appreciate you, Lanny. Well, I appreciate you guys. You guys are as big a part of the lodge as I am. Understand? Like, if you guys are not here, there's no lodge. I'm screaming into the void. You know, you guys keep my nonsense from going just into the void it actually reaches people's ears and minds without you like it's mm -hmm. a it's a uh what do you call it what do you call it ah mm -hmm. can't find the word someone get me a dictionary anyway when the when uh god damn it god damn it i can't think of it but anyway it's a uh it goes two ways. It's a two way street. That's not the that's not the that's not what I wanted to say, but it's a two way street. It's a two way street. That's a good way to put it. I can't do it without you guys here. Here we go. Stilette asks thoughts on the construct or expectations of bigger designs of the style enemy. I think the constructs are cool. Um, you know, they look a little bit like the guardians, you know? Yeah. They look a little bit like the guardians. I love I love the animation of them falling Wait. too. I think that's gonna I think that's going to be part of the the story lore too. Is that like the energy's gone and I'm sorry, just going to nothing. Here. My man Yoshi, <laughs> Sage of the Lodge, knew exactly what I was looking for. Symbiotic relationship. He read my freaking mind, man. Thank you. That's amazing. That's amazing. Let's go. Let's you know, go. <laughs> Skyward Sword. I miss them so much. You know what I'm starting to think? Hmm. What if the Zonai were actually Whoa, whoa. What if the Zonai are actually the predecessors to the Gerudo? Right? Because if you look at the way they, the, the, when you, oh God, what it, yeah, because, okay, so they're clearly working with Ganon here, right? But this isn't like the Guardians in um, Breath of the Wild where, you know, Calamity Ganon was able to sort of control them, you know, kind of uproot them. Right. This looks like they're working with, ganondorf and we know that ganondorf is a gerudo that's born every hundred years what yeah are like a uh um a prehistoric gerudo and that's why ganondorf is either able to control them or they're working with him i don't know just a random thought I had. that's what, interesting what, what do you make of all this own eye stuff <sighs> i mean i think i think it's good that they gave hints and different bits of details in the original and i hope it does play to an extent of um of something just of something new because i kind of it'd be cool if they were like somehow related to gerudo but i just i just there's so much i don't know about this game and part of me is just like it sounds bad but i'm not even thinking that much of it i'm just so like there's just so much i have no idea about that i'm just going to go in and play it and I'm super hyped for it. But if it if it did, I just want to. I want them. I say that, but then I also like. I miss Midna. I want to see Midna, even though I know I'm not going to. So what Midna do you miss? Little Ghoul Midna, or are you trying to get Twilight Midna up in this bitch? I like both of them. I think the. I just have more memories with the, the smaller one. That would be by your side. Like Twilight Princess is definitely my favorite Zelda game for sure. Respect. Um, you know, but because, you know, it's just that it's just that feeling of like, I want that dark story and I want like a companion. You're like, what get if it. you're going to get like, a what if dark the, story, but I don't think you like, get what a if, companion. But what if the arm is like a person or like can communicate to you? OK, you know, okay. That's now something I would really like, because then that brings that classic kind of Zelda back too. you know, it's like you have the fairy by you and then you have like Minna by you. And then this one, you have like whatever spirits on your arm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there was that icon in the top left corner of an arm. And what if you hit that and then it would kind of tell you like where to go, Ooh, something okay. like that. I think that would be kind of cool. 
interesting. Putting lemon in your water? Yeah. Oh, no, that helps. A, I saw that Umbra, my man. Umbra, don't worry. We, we had that earlier in the podcast. We had that lemon water. Look at that shit. We had Ooh. lemon water. I respect it. Thank Ooh. you, though. Thanks for the advice. Um, but I am going to I am going to an ENT next month to talk to them about this. Like, hey, how can I get my voice to last into the late night? You know? Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they'll be able to point me in the right direction. Um, Stilette mm-hmm. says that would be awesome. The ancient warrior outfit in Breath of the Wild did have red hair, just like the Gerudo. Follows up with wow. the ancient warrior outfit, whichever one made your strength level up. Honestly, I'm starting to think there's something to this because the Gerudo are like fierce warriors, right? Whereas like the Sheikah, mm-hmm. they're more stealthy. And the Yiga are just right. freaking idiots. But the Gerudo are like, they're strong. They're warriors. Hmm. Might be well, they confirmed, that. didn't, I thought Nintendo confirmed that like all the past hats and armor are going to be in the new game, right? Because mm-hmm. I saw someone say, I really want the green cap for Link. I think they're going to have everything in it still. Um, yeah, I think I saw something about that. I think I saw something about that, that like this is supposed to sort of, and this goes into uh, Yosuke's message here. What's your guys' opinion on the theory that Tears of the Kingdom is at the end of the timeline, but looped back to Skyward Sword? Wow. I definitely think it's at the end of the timeline. I think I'm pretty sure Tears of the Kingdom will be the furthest point in the timeline. If you're telling me there might be like a time travel thing to bring us back to Skyward Sword or loop it in, that could be crazy. That would be crazy, yeah. That makes sense too, and they could add off of that. I don't. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, here we go again. Were the Zonai part of Demise's army? Maybe that's why the whole connected. Interesting. You know, I don't think so because the first mention of Zonai is in Breath of the Wild, so I'm not sure. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. We've got a new Sage Yo! of the Lodge, ladies and gentlemen. We got a new Sage of the Lodge, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Bernie Baboon just became a Sage, my man. Thank you. Everybody, please give a warm welcome to Burning Baboon, the newest Sage of the Lodge over here. My man, welcome. Let me know what I can do to make your stay at the Lodge more accommodating. And uh, another shout out to uh, Trousers, who just dropped his Amazing. subscription over on Twitch 13 months very kingdom heartsy how's it going my man welcome to the stream awesome let's go popping it off here oh, sorry nice. uh this is this is this is pretty random but did you know that pokemon has an official timeline we're well, not like an official one but there was someone there's a higher up at the pokemon company or at game sorry at game freak that actually tweeted a timeline and then they deleted it really <laughs> there's a timeline for um Mega evolutions and then a timeline without mega evolutions. <laughs> I'll send it to you sometime. It's really funny, do. but they, but they, it's it's official and then they deleted it. <laughs> That's trippy. Yeah, isn't that wild? That's trippy, <laughs> man. Umbra says, "Tales of the Kingdom, maybe tears." Being the turn of Gundam of Zelda would be so wild and funny. The layers. <laughs> But, you know, things like time travel is no stranger to the Zelda series, man. They were doing that before. It was right. cool. You know? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. All righty. Okay. I'm we in are tears. coming up on two hours. Phew. I don't know if anyone has any um, questions left, comments, statements, expectations. I don't know. Tara. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, though, dude, like, Man, Nintendo's got a lot that's about to hit the fan just between... I mean, I'm most excited for Zelda. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. The Mario movie will be fun. You know what I mean? But Zelda, it's just just been so long since anything really mainline came out, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, Mario Kart's getting all this DLC. Like, there's Mario World at Universal. Like, you hear all this stuff, but you don't hear a lot about Zelda. And I like... Zelda does not get the love that it used to. Honestly, I I I think very subconsciously... Nintendo hates this series. They hate it. You think so? Because they have to give it so much effort. They have to give it so mm. much effort, and they got to break ground every time they drop a game. Don't get me wrong. The devs, yeah. the people making the game, they have a passion and a love for it. But I think, like, upstairs, Nintendo Corp, I, I don't think they, like, I-, I think there's just a part of them that's like, damn it, we always have to go all in with this, you know? Yeah. I, I just want to say real quick to Umbra, he said we're not getting Mario Kart 9 for a long time. I think 
I think we're going to get like a, a smash style Mario Kart with the new console. I think that's going to happen, but I don't know. I could be crazy. I could see it. Oh, hello. Stilette Yo, dropping a ten dollar super chat on us. That ain't cheap. Shout out to Stilette. Thank you. Says to combine all this into a theory. Oh, here we go. The oh, ancient boy. robots in the desert of Skyward Sword. We never saw their builders. So maybe the Zonai go all the way back with time travel with the time crystals from Skyward Sword. Stilette. Wow. I'm trying to go to bed after this. You can't do this to me. <laughs> That's a great theory. That's so good. I can't even think straight right now. That is spot on. Wow. Kevin Ribeiro. <laughs> Terra's chicken legs give him. I saw that. <laughs> <He's dodged. laughs> Unbelievable. Hold I on. I have to put the that. Terra slander debate has to happen now with all this. But Stilette, that's crazy. I didn't even think. About the Skyward Sword robots. That's a great. That's a great theory. Wow. Well, yeah, it is Man. nuts. <sighs> okay. How Kevin, do you guys feel about comes, uh, op Kevin. open world <laughs> beat em up smash? Bro. Open world beat em up smash brothers. Ooh. So like. Just this open world game where you could play as like any Nintendo IP and beat the shit out of stuff. I'm down. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, I could do it. I'm, I'm down. Do I'll do it now, yeah. Stilette says, could be a pipe dream. Wow. Appreciate you, Landy. I do truly miss the ancient robots. Love them. They were really cute in, um, in Skyward Sword. But let me tell you something, Stilette. I appreciate you. Let me say it again. Aww. I appreciate you. Uh, you. We're always hanging out and just, you know, being as supportive as you are. Um, But yeah, man, I... uh. I don't know. I feel like I covered everything that I wanted to cover. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling. Yeah, I covered everything I wanted to talk about. Um, quick question. When do you think we'll see a first official like skit from Nintendo Pictures? When do you think that's going to come out? I'm going to make a bold prediction. Okay. Never. Never. Because I think Never. I think this Mario movie is going to make so much freaking money. Nintendo's going to outsource it. Really? And, like, you think they you think they could cancel the it? Yeah, and maybe it'll fly under the flagship of um of Nintendo Pictures, but wow. I don't know. That. I don't know. Interesting. But there's also there's just so much to look forward to and and stuff so bro thank you thank Dude, you thank so much you. for thanks for coming in and uh, doing your thing man i i you know you are a wealth of you know not just gaming knowledge but nintendo knowledge you know and oh thanks just, man it's really easy to talk to man it's very easy oh thanks to. man so are you i'm i'm mad appreciate it dude thank you so much and yeah yo, it's yo, always it's always pleasure being a sicko oh what's up you're you are an honorary sicko Let's uh, let's make that clear. Treehouse is an honorary sicko. Thanks, man. Yosuke dropping two euro on us. I believe that's euros. I can be I can be um, culturally illiterate at times, but I believe that's <laughs> two euro. Uh, thank you for welcoming Burning Baboon in such a wonderful fashion, Yosuke. You are the man. A, you're already the safe homie. Lodge, so you're going further than you need to right there. But thank you, dude. Thank you so much. What a sicko. Absolute what a sicko. sicko. Uh, Umber says, wait, could you elaborate on that, Landy? I'm a bit confused. Uh, elaborate on what? We'll close it out on that, but let me know. But Bernie McGee <laughs> says, party time, always worked in the lodge. I love it here. I'm glad you do. Guys, I love Trousers. I love just having these conversations, trying to make the wait for all these fun games a little bit easier. You know, just have some fun. You know, that's really what I'm about. Trousers says, they said Pokemon Sleep would never happen, but look where we are now. <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> Never give up your dreams. Never give up your dreams. I'll say that. Oh much. man. But yo, burning baboons to let Yosuke. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are all awesome, man. I really appreciate Sickos. it. About Nintendo not making another movie because the Mario movie makes so much. Not so much that they wouldn't make another movie, but like Tree is saying, Nintendo has this division called Nintendo Pictures, and the Mario movie is being made by Illumination. 
And I think the Mario movie is going to go so well that Nintendo's going to say, why don't we let Illumination just do it? Why don't, now that we have all this money from the Mario movie, why don't we just reinvest that into letting Illumination and maybe some other animation studios doing it for us? Oh, they released, I didn't know this, but they released their official website. Who did? Nintendo for Nintendo Pictures. Really? Let me see. It says Nintendo Pictures website officially launched. Interesting. Let me see that. Let me see if I can. Previously known as Dynamo Pictures. Wow. Let's check this out. I'm pulling it up. Oh, translate, please. Wow. Oh, uh, let's get this on screen. Let's get this on screen for everybody. Okay. Nintendo Pictures. About. Oh, boy. I got us. I got us. Dope, dope. Translate this page. Video production using Nintendo IP. Provision of motion capture recording service. Ooh. Shareholder Nintendo Company LTD 100% owned. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. It's one of these sites. It's like all one page. Okay, there's not a whole lot to chew on. Here we go. I can read mm -hmm. this. We aim to have consumers around the world learn about Nintendo characters through video and to create unique videos that will remain in their memories forever. To that end, each and every one of our employees will always think about what our customers around the world will find interesting. And we will work hard to create an organization that can continue to grow by engaging in video production with interest. We will continue to challenge ourselves to continue providing unique and surprising images to customers around the world transcending generations and eras yeah you know what i think i take it back i think i take it back i actually think what they might do they might let illumination run the show for a little bit but they're eventually mm -hmm. going to take hold of this i think they're going to let it which take... yeah go ahead and it, it was i mean for them it's just genius to let them illuminate let illumination use their ip and start somewhere and make something and then go from there i think that's just that's genius because they wouldn't be that cocky of themselves just to do it by themselves right. and, and go forward. So that's, that's awesome. Fun fact. If you actually we call need... the number on the Mario movie commercial, Luigi picks up the phone and mentions a mansion. Yeah. I you know, did it's see it's that coming, dude. It's let me, the Nintendo cinematic universe is definitely coming. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's close this one out. Tree dude. Perfect. Thanks again for coming on. You're the man. Dude, thank you for having me. You're nice. the homie dude. You're the man. All the Treehouse's links are in the description. He's got a YouTube. He's got a Twitch. He's got a Twitter. If you like what he had to say on this episode, make sure you're following him. Dude, thanks again. Appreciate and love you all. My ass is headed to bed. Me too. <laughs> love you all, guys. You guys are awesome. We're going to be doing a podcast on Sunday for Final Fantasy 16. I might stream Ooh. the limit cut on for Kingdom Hearts 3 on Saturday. We'll see. But anyway, Ooh. love you guys. Closing it out here. Until next